Hi guys, this is Dormouse03. I am back with Iron Praetorian. Hello! Hi everybody. And we're gonna talk about a game that is near and dear to both of our hearts uh, from the Assassin's Creed series, the upcoming Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Uh, so tell me first, what what is the first thing that stands out to you uh, about this game and your hopes for it? Um, the first thing that stands out for me is the fact that we now have dual protagonists and we have a male and female dual protagonist, which will make the gameplay interesting because we may see the gameplay from both of their point of views, maybe like in a mission that you carry out, you may see two different perspectives if you can play from both of their point of views through the same mission or they may have separate missions between the two of them to advance the plot which would be interesting to see what mechanic they employ yeah i think when i saw this my first my immediate reaction was oh my gosh it's going to be like a fully co-op game and we're going to get to play as both of the twins but it doesn't seem like that is what they're doing uh, it seems like they've taken all the the multiplayer and co-op aspects out altogether and personally um if they weren't going to make it fully co-op i'm glad that they took it out altogether because it just wasn't interesting enough in the in the last couple of iterations for them to continue it as it was. Uh, but I agree, I think it's interesting to see the two different assassins, it's nice to see another female protagonist, and like like you said, my hope is that they are going to have, for the majority of the missions, a choice between one or the other, and I would really like to see, you know, being whichever one you choose, you kind of have a different path through that mission. And that will give you the ability to choose whether you want to go stealthy or more um, run in and, and hit and kill things uh, play style. And it'll also give you the added replayability of being able to go back and play the opposite way. So um, one thing that the Assassin's Creed series for me has not had really is that replayability factor. Because once you play through and you've leveled up, I don't really care to go back and play through again, necessarily. Um, but if there's a another way to move through the game uh, that I haven't seen, it will encourage me to play it again to see that other side. So that's pretty cool. Um, how about the setting? Yes, it's um, interesting to see London in this time period because it's when the British Empire was at its height. So London is like a large centre of trade and it's also the heart of the Industrial Revolution and also London is a very diverse city with lots of different areas within it and they all have their different character. So you have like Buckingham Palace for the, the royalty and then you have Westminster for Parliament and then maybe some of the like lower grade areas for the normal people and to see the city sort of um, maybe like the higher class areas look better and the lower class areas are a bit more slums and then you have the industrial section which really doesn't exist anymore because London's moved away from being an industrial city to a more like financial based city in mm -hmm. modern times. Very cool. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see this setting. I think it's, it's cool to see a more modern Assassin's Creed uh, which, is, which is pretty neat. Uh, and one thing that stood out to me in hearing some of the interviews was that these two, our two protagonists are going to be born as assassins, so they're going to be born into it, whereas all the other assassins that we've seen previously have, we've seen them sort of join the assassins and get in, inducted into the Brotherhood and build them up, and it, I think it'll be a nice change of pace to not have to do that again. You know, you don't have to go through and um and join and figure oh my gosh they're assassins it's like of course they're assassins this is the like 17th game in the series we know <laughs> so i think that that's nice it's also nice that we're going to know who the uh, antagonists are we already right. know the templars are controlling london it's like brotherhood where you already know the villains and you have to work out a way of trying to you know weaken them and then depose them and move it towards an assassin like occupied area rather than a templar influenced one which would be interesting to see again 
Yes, I think so too. Um, so what are your thoughts on the weaponry? Um, I think it's interesting to show that they've moved away from like displayed weapons like broadswords and pikes and such and towards like more concealed items that would be more socially acceptable like the cane sword where it's a sword that's hidden inside a cane that when you use it you become more like a high profile target rather than the right. hidden blade which as always has been hidden and you can assassinate people discreetly i like the idea of having more versatile throwing knives that have more functions than just killing a target so you can use them to create a distraction or maybe disarm somebody and that will give you more avenues of uh, interesting combat mechanics. Yeah, definitely. I think the stealth looks like they've improved it. They said that they're going to have a soft lock instead of a hard lock as you you know, move into cover and that kind of thing. And uh, what they were saying is they want it to be more fluid. And I feel like that is really good. I think that uh, they had some good mechanics in Unity. They really did have some good things that they implemented in Unity. Uh, I really particularly enjoyed the ability to sort of move quickly down from a, a height. Rather than just jumping off, you could move down really um, smoothly. And I liked that a lot. And so if they can continue to have that, I hope that they haven't removed that. Um, because they just, it feels like every iteration they kind of, they rem some things aren't there that were in it in the la last version that you're like, why? Um, so I, I hope that they keep having that and I, uh, it's nice to see things like I know that you were excited to see the whistle um, again. Yes, because that gives you the ability to distract um, opponents or make them move over towards you so you can discreetly assassinate them and hide the bodies and also it appears that they brought back like dual combat finishes which are a nice addition for Black Flag and Assassin's Creed 3 but were lacking in Unity but what we haven't seen is whether we're going to get the human shield ability back or not which mm -hmm. was really useful the amount of projectile weapons in Unity made it very difficult not having that ability when you were in a large combat situation to try and dodge all of the incoming fire yeah i think that um you're exactly right it got extremely frustrating in unity trying to dodge all the bullets that were constantly they were firing at you without that human shield mechanic and since we are going to continue to see guns and likely more of them i really hope that that's back too so let's see how about the grapple the rope launcher is that what they called it yeah it's effectively a glorified grappling hook so that you can ascend to higher places quickly like they showed in the gameplay trailer that you ascend up to the, some of the beams in a station so that you can get a good vantage point to pursue your um target easier it might also give you a nice um quick escape mechanism so you can quickly launch yourself on top of a building and escape someone who's pursuing you or so that you don't lose a target yeah, I, it also showed, um, like, moving on these little lines, um, so, like, sliding down the line, um, and so that seems to give you more mobility as well. I think the, the more that they can increase the fluidity and the mobility and the ease of movement, the more I tend to enjoy these games, because when I'm feeling like I'm always getting stuck on everything and I can't move around, or... When there are too many guards on the rooftops and you can't use the rooftops, then it's like, well, what's the point of the game? Because the whole point of the series is that you move around on the rooftops. So giving you more mobility in that sense is, is cool. Um, how about the gang war mechanics? Yeah, the gang war mechanics are nice to see again. It's sort of like um, in uh, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, it seemed where you would take over city areas to be able to give you more influence. but it looks like it's going to be um, more fleshed out so mm -hmm. that you can, m maybe you may need to claim city areas to unlock the next story missions or certain targets will only become available when you've unlocked certain areas that they're hiding in to be able to flush them out. Right. Yeah, I think the game war mechanics seem pretty, pretty cool. How did the combat in general look to you? It looked a lot faster paced 
and they said that it would be because they're moving away from you hanging back in combat to wait for someone to attack you to counter and that you need to move in and stun them before they can attack you all at once so it seems mm -hmm. more fluid like you need to be proactive in taking multiple targets down in a fight before they can overwhelm you which seems to make more sense now with not having the like defensive capabilities of being able to parry with swords and other such weapons that you would use, would have used in the past yeah i think it, i agree i think it looked a lot faster paced uh and it did seem to look like he was just going in there and tearing things up rather than waiting for the counters and whatnot i'm interested to see how the mechanics are implemented i think my and this is probably an unpopular choice, but my, my favorite fighting mechanics were actually in Assassin's Creed 3. Um, I just felt like that was kind of, for me, the height of the being able to block and take do the multiple counters and do the finishers. And it didn't feel like there were in, any enemies that were overpowered. Like each one, like this this type of enemy you needed to disarm and then you could kill them. Or this type of enemy you needed to counter. Or this type of enemy, if you countered them, they smacked you in the face. So you needed to not do that. So you had a little bit of strategy with each enemy type. It just flowed really well for me personally. So I'm interested to see. I know they tweak it every time. Um, and so I'm interested to see how it all kind of shakes out. So... The cart mechanics. You can now hijack carts, you can hide in them, you can drive them, them down the... or carriages, I guess. Um, yeah, you can, carriages. <laughs> they're not cart. I have my little cart that I'm wheeling along. <laughs> um, no, it's carriages. So you can hijack a carriage, you can hide in the carriage, you can hop... you can get on top of it and you can hop from carriage to carriage. Yeah. Um, and you can do sort of like racing after your targets um, or just you know driving them down the street what do you think about the carriage stuff that you've seen so far i think it's probably been implemented to replace the horse mechanics for some of the other assassin's creed because mm -hmm. the time has moved on and also that there are a lot of carriages within london at this time and also the they were talking about the ability to be able to get a group of gang members together to come with you and that mm -hmm. if you hijack a carriage and there's not enough room for all of your gang members then they will go and hijack their own carriage and follow you rather than you losing a number of gang members because there's not enough room, which I think is a really awesome mechanic. And it would be nice to see um, whether you can use it as a combat platform so you could maybe do some form of drive-by shooting on a target with a carriage. And... <laughs> yep. Yeah, so, I mean, to me, I, I like the idea of it as long as it's implemented well. I think... In certain ones, the vehicle and slash horse mechanics have been better than others. And as long as it's not this like clunky, awkward thing that you're trying to move around, then I, I think that it'll be cool. Um, they also mentioned that, that the civilian AI is going to be a little bit brighter. Uh, because obviously if you kill civilians, that desynchronizes you. Uh, but so you're like, well, how am I going to race this carriage down a crowded street? I'm obviously going to run over people. What they said was is that people will jump out of the way of you so that you're not going to constantly get desynchronized when you're trying to drive down the street, which I think is very good <laughs> because that would be ex incredibly irritating. And I can just imagine one of those 100% synchronization things is not hit anybody. <laughs> while you're driving the carriage. That would seem to be one of the things they would put in with a new mechanic like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. On a different note, I would like to see more modern-day content, because Unity was definitely lacking in any progression through the modern-day story, which I know everyone loves the Assassins in the past, but the main, the main story of Assassin's Creed is the modern mm -hmm. day, and how, like, is Juno going to take over the world, or are the assassins and the Templars going to stop them, or is one of the two factions going to gain complete dominance over everything? And with Unity, it's you have a few conversations and that's it, and it felt very lacking in modern story progression, and I would like to see more content. Yeah, I think that they 
they started to move away from the modern day storyline after Assassin's Creed 3, I believe. Be- they had some of it still in Black Flag, and then I don't know about Rogue, because I haven't played Rogue, you have. I would say that there's about an equal amount of modern day content in Rogue compared with Black Flag. Maybe a little more in Black Flag, but it's definitely more fleshed out modern day content wise than Unity was. Okay, so yeah, it just it feels like they moved away from that because people were like, oh, we don't care about Desmond, we don't want to see Desmond, we want to play Ezio, we want to play the, you know, the the past stuff because yes, that is more fun gameplay wise, but I agree with you story wise. I want to know what's going on with that modern day story. I know that they've made it a little complicated and convoluted, but I would still like to see what's happening with that and and where the Assassins and Templars are now, because the whole idea of the series is that you start in the modern day, you use this um, DNA memory sequences to be able to go back and replay things from the past to find something to inform the the present. And so it'd be nice to actually see some of that <laughs> in this one. Definitely. All right. So it looks like I've ticked off pretty much everything that I had written down. Is there anything else that you were thinking no. about? That, that's pretty much everything. I remembered the modern day thing halfway through, and I was like, I need to say something about that. Yeah, I'm glad that you did, because I had forgotten completely about it, so um, I'm glad that you... That, that's how that forgettable up. Unity is. Unity is so forgettable, and I guess that's that's one, I guess, final thing that we can talk about, is I just hope that the story is more fleshed out and better told and more memorable and that these characters are more memorable because it's not that the characters and the story in unity were bad it's just that they weren't as interesting they weren't as as memorable they weren't as good because i mean like in unity you have napoleon it's like Mm -hmm. the start of him becoming powerful because it appears that he acquires an apple of eden from the king or the king's study and it's just Mm -hmm. like but we didn't really see that much of him and it's i don't know it just feels like like they they focused on arno's story and arno seems one of the more forgettable protagonists of the series yeah but maybe we're seeing it in a more negative light because of all the problems unity had and it seemed a bit more limited but maybe that's because it's their first game on the xbox one and they want to rush them out every year and it yeah does impact the quality when we need to get this out by the same date as we put it out last year rather than let's make the best game we can and then put it out when it's ready yeah i don't know i i i do think that it did have problems and that we have that in our heads but when i played unity i played it in january of this year and all the bugs and problems and stuff were pretty much fixed and i never experienced really any of those crazy glitches so i i just think that it your perception isn't skewed because of the problems which is good neither was mine but maybe some people might have negative feelings about it because of the problems they had with actually being able to play the game right yeah no i think that it it just it definitely is what you said it suffers from that we need to put a game out every year mentality where they aren't as able to to focus on polishing it and they aren't as able to focus on making as interesting a narrative or as interesting characters because they're trying to do it quickly and push it out and i know they have different studios working on them and they kind of rotate i believe and that is that is something that i feel like has been a problem with them for a while where they implement a couple of good things in this one but then the next one those aren't there anymore because there was another studio working on it 
you know and so those those things that they implemented the other studio wasn't and so they just aren't there and so it takes several years down the line for them to integrate those things and I guess what I'm hoping for is that this one is going to be one of those years where they've integrated everything together because I feel like that's maybe what Black Flag was where they where it was a couple of games they had uh in their rotation and then for black flag it was the culmination of those things and so i'm hoping that this is going to be maybe the culmination of you know black flag liberation rogue unity and this new the new mechanics that they're putting in yep i'm hoping that they learn from their mistakes with unity and that we will have a first class game again Yes, indeed. I know this is this is a series that's really important to you. Would you say is this your favorite series? Second favorite after Mass Effect. Mhm. So, it's kind of like this is your baby and you want it indeed. to be good. I w- I want to see more <laughs> more of everything. More of everything and I want it to be good and I want it to be polished and I don't want it to have bugs. Is that too much to yeah. ask for? I mean, we pay a fair amount of money to get these day one. We should at least expect a game that actually works. I mean, there's going to be a yes. few bugs, obviously, but not something that's absolutely riddled with them. Right, not something where everybody's face looks like they're melting off and you can't progress the storyline and that. Because you're hovering midair, stuck on something that doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I think absolutely. Maybe we we can't expect to have everything that we want, but we should we should at least have the expectation of having a game that is playable. Definitely. So I'm looking forward to October twenty third, and this will be a day one buy for me. Yes, me too. Um, I the series has waned, I think, in the past couple of years, but I am still very interested in seeing this iteration and just some of the things that they showed off and. The characters just feel more interesting for this one for me, and the setting feels more yes. interesting. And so, this I'm one... hoping that it will reinvigorate the series for yes. the new generation of consoles. Yes, me too. All right, so those are our thoughts on Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you in the next one.